Let's delve into all of this with Michael Kramer. He's a professor of philosophy at the University of Chicago. He joins us now from Illinois. Michael, thanks for being with us. First, I want to start there. In Jerusalem, have you ever seen or imagined something like this where the major places of worship, uh, the major icons for these three Abrahamic religions would be shut down during such a major holiday period? No, uh, I was in Jerusalem a few years ago while my wife was teaching in a study abroad program there, and I visited uh, the, we the Western Wall and I visited the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and to think of it empty on Easter is, well, it's amazing. Uh, it's just un un unreal. And um, similarly for the Vatican, which I was in a, a couple of years ago, I mean in St. Peter's, there was nobody there for Easter. Uh, so all of the major churches are closed, and it's the same is true in Chicago. I would think that the topic of COVID-19 is featuring prominently in most sermons now that this is, of course, Easter Sunday for those observing the Latin Day. Next week will be for, obviously, the uh, Eastern Orthodox uh, Christians. How are religious leaders reconciling, uh, reconciling a pandemic with faith? Well, I mean, this is a big philosophical question. I teach a whole course on it. Um, I mean, not about the pandemic, but just in general, the problem of, you know, suffering and evil in the world and how that's reconciled with faith. I mean, for a Christian, uh, Easter Sunday follows on Good Friday. And I think a fundamental theme is that God, you know, enters into our human life in the person of Jesus Christ and then suffers with us. And therefore, also, we suffer with God. So this, the suffering that we endure in illness becomes a way of being united with God. And uh, I mean, also the Pope yesterday in his, um, or earlier today uh, in Rome <laughs> at the Easter Vigil, um, spoke about the pandemic as uh, an opportunity for us to rethink our way of life, um, to come to recognize uh, our sort of global unified humanity and to our responsibility for one another and to reflect on um, our, you know, we're seeing clear skies, <laughs> we're seeing the effects of not uh, using as much uh, of our resources um, and the ecological benefits of that. Uh, we can reflect on our, on our life and he even proposed uh, that we should have a universal basic income for all of humanity. Um, so I think in general, these periods um, are, from a religious point of view, are periods of trial, but also of reflection and of being able to think about how to refigure our lives. Some religious leaders have been more accommodating than others of the need to go virtual this year. And there's some interesting uh, pushback in the U.S. with some threatening legal action over lockdown. You have this conflict of freedom of religion. How have you seen that play out? Well, I mean, as a Catholic, uh, you know, the, my archdiocese in Chicago has closed all the churches, and we've been um, celebrating through watching services online. Um, this is particularly difficult in a way for Catholics because Catholicism is a religion of physical sacraments, and you're cut off from them through... Um, through the closure of the churches. Um, but um, historically, this has always been true. I mean, during the plagues in Europe, during the flu pandemic in 1918 and 1919, churches were closed, and there were always people who protested that and tried to act against it. But, but I mean, this is always, this is not a new thing. Um, now, I mean, I know that there are pastors in the United States who insist that they're going to go ahead and celebrate. I don't actually know what happened today. I didn't look on the news to see if these people did, in fact, have the services they were going to um, go ahead and do. But uh, from my point of view, um, this is not properly following the commandment to love your neighbor, because the reason we're isolating ourselves is for the sake not only of ourselves, but of everyone else in the society. Do, do you predict that any of this will change the way people observe their faith going forward, the ability to go online? I, I mean, I mean, they imagine there must be something to be said about celebrating Mass from the comforts of your living room and your pajamas. 
Uh, well, I don't know. For myself, I, I, it's a second best. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, the physical presence of other people that you're worshiping with and the physical presence uh, acts that you're part of, prayer and sacrament that you're part of, um, it's, it's really not the same. Uh, I, I, it's always a possibility for people who can't make it to the actual services, but um, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, you know, maybe people, some people just won't go back. Maybe they'll decide they don't need it. Um, for myself, I miss it. <laughs> so I want to go back. Um, similarly, I miss, you know, being able to see my family at this time. Um, and I'm sure people will go back to seeing their families. So um, we'll see. All right. Michael Kramer from the University of Chicago, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome.